So thank you all for coming. And um, I am Diana Spears, the daughter of Marguerite Spears, who's a longtime member, although we haven't been coming much since COVID. Uh, and since she was restricted to a wheelchair often, I wasn't able to get her here all the time. Though she came to, I think, her 100th birthday here, and her, her 99th and her 100th birthday here. She died just six months short of being 104. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. She was a great woman. But I'm going to begin with a quote from Yoda in episode one of Star Wars, Phantom Menace. Quote, fear is the path of the dark side. Fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to suffering. All of her life, Marguerite led to peace and love and away from suffering. She turned 103 on May 5th, 2020, and she died at a board and care home in Santa Monica on December 8, 2020, from COVID-19. She had been one year old when the Spanish flu epidemic hit in 1918. Her life was bookends to global pandemics. She came from a very politically, socially, and religiously active family. Her oldest brother, Riley, was born in Washington, D.C., where her father, where her father, John Runk, was working in the, on the 1910 census, his white pearl with him. During World War II, John was a major and taught officers training, as he did again in World War II. He would receive a commendation from President Truman, probably as a result of one or more of the officers he trained. In 1933, Riley joined the Civilian Conservation Corps as part of FDR's Depression-era New Deal, giving young men employment in environmental work. Riley became a career officer in the Air Force, went to Germany and other stateside locales. Her younger brother, Bob, was injured on D-Day. After initial stay at a hospital in England, he returned to the United States and spent a year in a hospital in Detroit, Michigan, where he was treated for stomach injuries and had his left foot amputated at the ankle. Marguerite and Diana visited him there. While in Detroit, they went to the Detroit Industrial Library, where Diego Rivera was painting a, painting a mural as his wife, Frida Cahill, watched. When Bob was recovered, he returned to Harvard on the GI Bill. Her sister, Dorothy's husband, was at the Battle of the Bulge and would suffer hearing problems from all the artillery fire he experienced there. After women got the vote in 1920, Pearl became a charter member of the League of Women Voters in Ohio. She would always go to the polls on election day to check to make sure all the votes were properly counted. When her granddaughter, Diana, was old enough to walk, she would join Pearl at the polling booth, really just a small house-like structure at a vacant lot about a block away. Pearl was also a member of the ACLU, as were Dorothy, Marguerite, and Bob. Dorothy went to Kent State where she would get a degree in fine arts before graduating. The sisters put on a program where Dorothy sang and Marguerite danced. Like Dorothy and Marguerite, Bob was an avid fan of opera, spending his earned money on front row seats to local opera events while still in high school. He first listened to the Cleveland Opera broadcast on the radio. He would later marry Gail, a woman he met at an ACLU meeting in Pacific Palisades, who also loved opera. Marguerite, excuse me just a second. Marguerite graduated from Kent State University in 1950 with her MA dissertation on the black businessman in Akron. Before the famous sit-ins of the 60s, Marguerite organized a sit-in at a downtown Akron lunch counter with a number of her black friends to protest their segregated service. 
Later, when she and her brother Bob were first living in Santa Monica, they would work with the NAACP to dis desegregate local motels. In 1940, Marguerite married a man she met while doing a time study at Goodrich, Goodrich Tire Company. When he was drafted in World War II, Marguerite with, went with him to Tennessee, where he taught Javanese to fly via cockpit training. She returned home to Cuyahoga Falls, Ohio, when she became pregnant. Dorothy, Marguerite, and Riley's wife all gave birth to girls in 1944 in Ohio. Diana was sitting on the front porch swing with her grandfather, talking about him putting up a trapeze in the garage like he had done for Marguerite. Suddenly, he stood erect with a strange look on his face, and, we try, and when he tried to walk, collapsed. He would die shortly thereafter from a stroke. Later, after Marguerite's father's death, she divorced her husband, who had become abusive to both her and Diana. She took a job with the West Side w YWCA in Chicago. She enjoyed her work with the Y because it promoted ending racism. Her daughter, Diana, would have to join her later because her father blocked her from leaving Ohio from September until January. Her brother, Bob, came from Boston to be with them so the two wouldn't be alone. Instead of returning to Boston, Bob moved to California where he had done military training before leaving for Europe. In Chicago, Marguerite and Diana lived in a two-room, three-story walk-up where the bathroom and refrigerator were shared with other residents on that floor who were primary Asian medical students. The refrigerator often smelled of kimchi, a fermented, fermented de delicacy of Korea. It was a rough neighborhood with a mix of Puerto Ricans and Polish people who seemed at odds with one another. The teacher's name was Miss Skelton, an older woman who looked much like her name. In the cloakroom, two of Diana's coats were slashed. Diana and another girl who was Jewish occasionally took to leaving school and going to Diana's apartment. On another occasion, Diana would take the bus to the Y and see her mother at work. There she would get a treat of mint ice cream in the cafeteria. The bleakness of Chicago was alleviated when Marguerite and Diana went to see a performance by Josephine Baker who became even more renowned when she lived in Par Paris and fostered more than a dozen multi-ethnic children. Marguerite turned down an offer from a Wisconsin teacher's college as she wanted to move to a warmer climate. She, was answer she answered an ad submitted by G Barry Goldwater and Stu Udall before either of them were involved in politics to come to Phoenix, Arizona. Phoenix, unlike other cities in, in the state, had not complied with the 1954 Brown versus Board of, Board of Education Supreme Court decision on desegregation of schools. Marguerite was brought in to correct this problem. We know later Goldwater would make a ses successful run to be U.S. Senate, Senator and Udall after se serving three terms as an Arizona congressman was appointed Secretary of the Interior from 1961 to 1969 under JFK and Lyndon Johnson. In Phoenix, when Marguerite went to Tucson to check out how they had de de desegregated, Diana stayed with Phyllis, Phyllis Perkins, whose friend Louis Armstrong came by once when Diana was there and played his trumpet. In Phoenix, they also met some artists. Eugene Grigsby, a notice at, noted abstract expressionist, black artist, and John Leeper, who followed Marguerite to California, where he would paint a full-length portrait of her. I still have several of his works in addition to that that hang in our apartment. Marguerite called upon the Western Regional Director of the NAACP, Franklin Williams, who had been appointed by Thurgood Marshall to assist her in Phoenix. Marguerite and Mr. Williams were able to resolve this problem 
though to, to this day, Arizona is still a very conservative state, despite in 2020 having elected Mark Kelly, a former astronaut, to the Senate. Mark is husband to former Arizona co Congresswoman Gabby Giffords, who retired after she was shot in the head at a campaign event. Mr. Williams, along with Sergeant Cyber, would be instrumental in forming the Peace Corps and would later be employed, employed, appointed as ambassador to Ghana by President Johnson. After winning the case in Arizona, Marguerite and Diana moved to California where her younger brother Bob lived. They first lived with, with the NAAC family over their garage in Santa Monica, then for a year lived in Venice while Marguerite had a temporary job. Once established with the Beverly Hills YWCA in 1956, Marguerite moved them into an apartment in Santa Monica where they have lived mostly together ever since. Two noteworthy events happened while Marguerite was at the Beverly Hills YWCA. She was invited to a pre-opening event at Disneyland. She, had, she and Diana went and both shook hands with Walt Disney and saw Mar Mickey Mouse and other characters walk around. Second, when Marguerite met Eleanor Roosevelt at a World Federalist function and, vol and volunteered to drive her to San Francisco where she was going to sign a United, United Nations human rights document. Eleanor loved to laugh and had a memorable one, so the trip was fun. Diana, after college, lived for a while nearby when she worked as a social worker in Hawthorne, then lived in Venice after she had come back from a six-country trip to Europe. Later, when a woman who turned left without noting Diana's oncoming car ran into her, which caused a head injury, Diana eventually had to move back with Marguerite. Marguerite, after a job with Ormsby Village, a UCLA-sponsored summer camp, went defunct, and while still waiting for an opening with the county, took various waitresses' jobs, once having to have a customer show her how to debone a fish. Marguerite took a job with the LA De County Department of Community Services, which worked with ver various community coordinating councils to alleviate juvenile gang activities. Initially, Mar Marguerite worked in the county building in downtown Los Angeles, where she made a point of meeting Otis Chandler, editor of the Los Angeles Times, as she would been, be organizing conferences in the downtown area that she would promote in the paper. After a couple of years in downtown, Marguerite would move to work in a portion of the probation department office in the county building in Santa Monica. She would hire a staff of five to work in various communities from Malibu to Koreatown to San Pedro. She worked with the department until it was defu defunded in the late 70s. Once settled in Santa Monica, Marguerite and Diana joined the Unitarian Church and remained active members until Marguerite fell and broke her hip in 2015. When they first attended this church, Howard Matson was the minister. However, er, when Matson published the, fo the Fourth Wise Man in 1954, conservative members in the church found his, he and his wife, Rosemary, too liberal and fired him. He and Rosemary moved to a UU church in San Francisco and ministered there until 1961. And from 1971 until seven, 1978, they ministered to farm workers for the UUA. When Madsen left, half the members, including Marguerite, started a church with the Reverend Ir Irwin and his wife Marge Gady from, from Michigan as the minister. After two years, the Gatys returned to Michigan. The church would go on with visiting speakers in the Westdale loca location for a while. In 1963, Marguerite went to a woman's march in Washington, D.C., where Dr. M Martin Luther King, J Jr., famously gave I Have His 
dream speech urged on by Mahalia Jackson. In D.C., Marguerite met Maggie Pipes, who told her that her husband, Reverend Ernie Pipes, was now the minister in Santa Monica, excuse me, and that she would like him. Marguerite came back and never left. She became active in many committees as well as in the office, as un unlike now, there was no paid staff. Marguerite would frequently join her sister in New York to go to the theater, particularly if Tom jo Moore, one of Dorothy's students at Purdue, was directing. Tom won many theater awards, among them for Night Mother and Grease. Tom also worked in TV and movies. Dorothy would also tour Europe with the Bach Chorale, with Marguerite going on one occasion. Marguerite attended most of the year, yearly UU General Assemblies, Assemblies in their various locations. On occasion, Diana would accompany her as when in Long Beach, California, and again, when it was in Minnesota where Marguerite was born, and which was part of a church dining for dollars fundraiser. Marguerite, when Reverend Parps, Pipes retired after 35 years in the pulpit, was in a group who chipped in money to have an annual Pipes lecture series with renowned speakers and on one occasion a noteworthy organ player. A memorial service for Ernie was held Saturday, May 1st, 2021. The remaining members of the Pipes lecture series, Patrick McGuire and Diana Spears, are holding this event now that we can are holding this event now that we can meet again in person to honor Reverend Pipes, Leonard Adler, and Marguerite. Marguerite joined the local Santa Monica YWCA at a six block walk and also did a two mile walk three times a week. Marguerite was a member of the local NAACP chapter where she would reconnect with members year later when Diana joined an Ameris Emeritus Gospel Choir, led by William Bryant, one of her friends from the NAACP. In addition to her active church life, Marguerite was a member for, of, for Citizens for Global Solu Solution and its lobbying adjunct, World Federalists. Marguerite had joined the World Federalist organization, organization after World War II in Ohio, meeting Norman Cousins, editor of the Saturday Review of Books, who was also active. As part of her membership in World Federalist, she would be in Rome when the peace accords were assigned, and in Brussels that led to the International Criminal Court. Marguerite and her daughter, Diana, would go to a USC meeting room when one of the judges from the International Criminal Court came to educate on their activities. On their, that day was current Mayor Eric Garcetti was there also. I am hopeful that the ICC will inve investigate Putin's invasion of Ukraine <laughs> and the atrocities committed there. After her retirement, Mar Marguerite volunteered at UCLA's Neuropsychological Institute, and there she would reconnect with Nor Norman Cousin, who was a patient at the hospital. Cousin famously decided to forego his chemotherapeutic treatment in favor of watching old movies, such as the Marx Brothers, to prove his, fear, his theory that laughter is the best medicine. When he indeed got well, Mar Marguerite invited him to come to speak here on that very to topic. Cousins did live about 10 more years, not dying until November 1990. After her retirement, Marguerite also took up ballroom dancing at the Arthur Murray studio in Beverly Hills, as she taught both ballroom and tap dance to earn money while in college. She and her partner at Arthur Murray studio performed at several ballroom ex exhibitions. After obtaining her MA with honors, Marguerite donated donated money to other honors students with, with theses to which she 
could strong, strongly support. One of such is among materials that I have here. Marguerite retired after the Department of Community S Services was defunded by the county. This proved tragically mistaken when armed youth gangs fueled by drugs from Mexico soon began to run rampant through the county. All these coordinating councils could have been utilized in the fight to deter the gangs and the many killings that still go on between various gang members to, that, to this day. In some, inspired by her parents' community services, Marguerite became involved in act activities that promoted peace and racial equality, both through her church activities Excuse me. And year, yearly trips to Washington, D.C. To, wash to lobby elected officials for these issues with Citizens for Global Solutions. Diana and her daughter Tammy, Tammy would go on several occasions as D.C. is such an amazing city with its museums, the monuments, such as the Lincoln Memorial, the FDR structures, and the Martin Luther King Jr. Monument. To me, Marguerite is the epitome of a life well lived, having traveled around the world to Rome to sign the peace accords, and then for signing the International Criminal Court established in Brussels, Belgium. There meeting Sir, Pe Sir Peter Euston, Queen Noor of Jordan, and Be Bishop Desmond Tutu of South Africa, who she would see again on her trip to South Africa. Uh, in South Africa, because she would mi visit the prison on Robben Island where Nelson Mandela was incar incarcerated and learned that he taught his guards to read. In South Africa, Marguerite also petted a cheetah. On another church sponsored trip, she traveled to Hong Kong, China, Mongolia, where she slept in a year, Russia, where she would visit a, a dissident known by her traveling companion, on to Turkey, Italy, and then back to California from England. Earlier, they went to New Orleans on a UU trip, and while there would visit Marguerite's niece, Farrell Menon, who then taught at Tulane University. After moving to California, Farrell met Dick Smoke at the UU church in Pasadena, and Farrell recently retired from the USC School of Social Work. Marguerite took her mother, Pearl, to New York to visit Howard Castle, as she was a descendant of the younger Howard, who had to camp to the United States. Marguerite and Diana would travel to Ireland to visit where the more part of the family had come from before they came to the U.S. in droves during famines. They would also go to Alaska on a Dining for Dollars award. Margaret was one of the many church members who invested in Wedbush securities due to a church member, Jerry Mo Moore's involvement and recommendation. Now, both Diana and her daughter, Tammy, share the portfolio. Now we're going to enjoy some music by our guests, Linda Alvarez, Severin, say your last name for me. Balin. 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 Yeah. Benin, Benin, sorry. And William Bryant, who's going to do a little bit on the organ. I, I didn't know that organs were so different from one another. And this is not an organ that he is familiar with. So he's just going to sit there and pump the pedals. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to do it. Huh? Well, do some, do whatever. <laughs> I don't care. When in it, whatever you do is wonderful. That's <laughs> true. play the piano later. Oh, okay. Okay. Do you know how to play this organ? No. <laughs> we have a very apparently difficult organ to play. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I need to blow my nose. Anyway. I'm very much in, in, in support of Ukraine, and I hope all of you will, will support it as well. They are doing a wonderful job against, I mean, Putin 
I saw a video of Putin that looked like he had Parkinson's disease because he was gripping the table and his foot was tapping. So, you know, I don't think he's a well man. And I didn't, you know, I didn't call us to order. Well, whatever. <laughs> anyway, let us enjoy some music that is going to be basically by Mahalia Jackson. Since, since Marjorie went to that, could somebody help me? Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm a little out of steady. Testing, testing. Well, good afternoon, everyone. It's always wonderful to be in the midst of people who care about one another. Wait a minute, you gotta speak louder, I think. Can you not hear me? There, there. Now? Okay, good, good. And we're here to celebrate, of course, the many, many lives that have been lived by Marguerite Spears and by others as well. And we just want to thank Right, and Lynn Adler and Reverend Pikes. And we just want to be able to just thank each one of them for what they have brought to us, what they have done. Because without people doing the work for us, on the behalf of us, I wouldn't be here. I would not be here. So I just want to thank not only them, but each of you have done something. And we thought it would be appropriate. I, I say we, uh, let me take that back. Severin thought it would be appropriate to sing a UUC song on 347, Gather the Spirit. So if you have one of those green books near, you can turn to 347. I think it's in the large one, three. It's called Gather the Spirit. Got it? Gather the Spirit. Harvest the power Our separate fires Will kindle one flame Witness the mystery trials in the light appears all the same gather in peace gather thanks gather in sympathy Gather in peace. 
Mahalia song. <laughs> Something that probably everybody in here knows. Can you still hear me? I hope so. Sometimes I have, uh, I get to move it. <laughs> and when I move, the microphone is moving maybe in the opposite direction. So let me know if you cannot hear me. Okay, okay, all right. Yeah. Oh!
the saint, Marguerite is a saint, Red Heights is a saint. Some of us are gonna be saints. I say some of us because maybe some of us don't wanna be saints just yet. <laughs> coming to the piano now. <laughs> Guess who we have? This is, by the way, Mr. Severin Benin that just left. <laughs> we now have coming the Reverend, it's actually a Reverend, Mr. William Bryant. He is head of the Santa Monica Emeritus Gospel Choir, and that's how I met him. Over a hundred members of that gospel choir, and boy, what a choir. <laughs> but boy, what a musician as well. So we were blessed to have two musicians of very high quality, so we thank them both. Everybody. 
everybody here in his hands he's got the whole world in his hands mr william bryant to turn this back over now to Miss Marguerite. Are we coming back to the stage, my dear? Or are we ending? Or what are we doing? Oh, are you, are you, uh, oh, you want to do one more song? in rehearsal on Wednesday on Zoom with the gospel choir led by Mr. William Bryant. And I did not realize, and I came in a little late, that he had done, I know the Lord will make a way somehow. Uh, no, I want you. <laughs> no, I want you to sing it. <laughs> I want you to sing it. <laughs> Yes, he will. 
the way. Yeah, he will. I go to him in secret prayer. Take my burden and leave them there. I know the Lord will make a way. Yes, he will. refreshments in the other room in case you do live on here. Some people are not going to be able to stay, but I thank you for coming. Oh, yeah, thank you for oh, If you want to go, oh, sure. we have cases here. Oh, no, I'm standing. Oh, wow. yeah. You have nothing at all. 